Yo, what is up guys? Ben here from my channel, obviously. Uh, bringing you a little Cinema 4D tutorial. I'm going to go over some basic stuff, nothing too complicated. This is the image we're going to be creating. So it looks quite complicated, but trust me, it's not. It just looks that way. So let's get on into Cinema 4D. Okay, here we go. I'm going to go over some some things you may know, some things you may not know. The first thing, just uh, to clear this up, this texture pack here is one that I downloaded from a guy called Acres. I'll stick a link to his channel. He does Cinema 4D tutorials, he does After Effects, he does, you know, quite a few different things. It's pretty cool. Go and check him out. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, you'll learn a lot from him. And I sure have. So that's his pack. All credit goes to him. First thing I want to explain is these lines here you always want to work within this area and not these or on, at least on the final render if I just go and add a text object real quickly just to get that there we go so if I just put that there now if I rendered that out now as my final output I would only get this image here because that's the resolution I've got in my set as my final render which is it 320 by 240 and that's this box here so, you know, if I was to render that out now, I want to make sure it's within this area. So I'll render that out, and that would give you the full image then. So bear that in mind when it comes to rendering. If suddenly you're rendering something and you notice a bit of it's cut off, that would be why. So let's get off into the render settings. This is the first thing we want to set up. In general, that's going to just be kept as it is. I'm just going to run through this really quickly. The width, I'm going to stick as a, as a nice... HD image and I'm just pushing the tab keys here just to you know go go through the options 720 nice big image if you was doing this to your desktop resolution you would put your resolution in there so, you know mine's 1280 by 800 so I would put 800 in there if I was going to have it as a background or whatever so that's them settings done uh, save stick your output path I'm going to stick the format as a JPEG and I'm going to go to the options and put the quality to 100% Multipass, we're not working with any of the programs. We don't need to mess around with that. Anti-aliasing, stick this to best and stick it maximum levels, two by two, minimum levels, one by one. This will remove any jagged edges, any reflections. We're going to be working with reflections, so we need to look make it look as crisp as possible. Plus, we're going to have the lighting, so we need them to look like smooth lights, not jagged lights and that's what this anti-aliasing will do you get it in game settings when you're playing on a pc you'll have a, an anti-aliasing option that's basically what it does it smooths out the graphics it doesn't make it look jagged so that's anti-aliasing effects we're going to add two effects ambient occlusion click 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 occlusion and we're going to add global illumination we're not going to change any settings in this if we was doing an animation we could um, bring the maximum samples down to say 80 and we could change um, this setting and we could change these down to low and this basically would just allow us to render a little bit quicker and we would do that if we was doing an animation if we were strapped for time whatever but you know having these two effects does increase the render time by quite a bit but they are really nice effects to have plus we need the global illumination for what we're working on today so make sure these these are there I'm gonna change this now to 110 and it's not gonna make much of a difference so. okay let's get into our perspective view let's just move these you got these buttons over here these obviously move things around and do various different things this one zooms in and out hey. so first thing we want to do is add a, add a cube oh another another little tip um, which kind of helps out if I just go and add a cube there really quickly so just hold and click that click cube or you can just click it once and it will put a cube there um, if I was having problems moving this cube about and I wanted to switch to a front view or side view I can just push down on my mouse on my wheel button my scroll wheel scroll reel even and that will bring me up to these four views and I can I don't need to click in any of these I can just go in say that one and I can start zooming in and out and do the same with that See, I'm not clicking in there, I'm just zooming in and out. So I don't have to actually physically, I don't have to select that as the active window. But then I can go in there and I can push down on my mouse wheel and I can make adjustments and 
do all that kind of stuff and I can push it again and come back out. So that's a nice quick way to switch between the views. Anyway, let's get back into the perspective view. And we're just going to make this, you know, a rough room. You know, the box looks kind of small there, but once we're inside it, it will give a different illusion off. And that will do. Now, the next thing we want to do is make this editable. So we're going to click the cube and push down the keyboard. Uh, or you can you can right click it and make editable. There's a couple of different ways you can do it. And click that and click that one there. That'll make it editable. There is loads of different ways. The next thing we want to do, that's editable now. So we want to select this side here. So we're going to do this by selecting that option and just selecting that side and pushing D on the keyboard or delete even on the keyboard, not D. And now we can go inside the cube. Now what we want to do is just get back into the normal mode so we're not, you know, we're not selecting the sides. And the next thing we want to do is add the light. So again, we're going to go and add another cube by clicking the top one there. And I'm just going to go into the, the top view here and just make that a rough light. Let's just uh, go back into that view. So you'll see me switch between the views quite a lot. Let's bring this down a bit. Okay. Yep, let's bring this up. Okay, so that's uh that's looking quite good. Next thing we want to do is basically duplicate this and this allows us to create rows of these these cubes and we can make an edit to the well if I go and add the cloner object now and put the cube in there. Oops. Put the cube in there. I can make you know, I can add colors to the cloner object and it will apply the colors to the, you know, every all the cubes in there. So if we go into the cloner object and select mode and stick to a grid, and we want to change these values from 3 to 1, 3 to 1, and keep this as 3. And this will give us a nice row of 3 there. And we just want to spread these out a little bit. Now, they look a little bit too too thick, I think. So we just come in a cube here, select the cube, and just bring it down a little bit. Okay, there we go. I'm just going to move these back. Now they're too small, so let's just uh, go back into the cube and adjust the size, bring it back. Now you can play with this for hours, so I'm just going to keep it like that for now, for simple sakes. And the next thing is we're going to add the illuminance to the cloner object. This is pretty simple. Double click the materials area, a new material will pop up. Go and edit that by double clicking it. Go into luminance, put a tick mark in there. Let's stick the brightness up to 250. Anywhere between 250 and 300, or 200 and 300 is good. And I'm going to give it a slight bluey tint. Just a little, little bit. And that's it. Drag that onto your cloner object. <coughs> Excuse me. Drag that onto your cloner object, and you'll see it makes the lights go. Now what we're going to do? We're going to render this out. I think. We'll just move this down a bit. Let's make sure anti-aliasing is on. In fact, I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to turn it off just to show you guys exactly what it does. So I'm going to render this out really quick. Right, that's rendered out. That looks pretty good. Now you can see the lights here are jagged. They look crap. And that's because we haven't got anti-aliasing turned on. Or we haven't got that as part of the render option. So as soon as we put that on, these will become nice and smooth. Trust me, they will. Uh, so that looks quite good. The, the room's lit up quite well. And that looks nice. Now, we're on a 10 minute mark here. Oh, it's a little bit under that. So I'm going to make this into a two-part tutorial. So this is the room. We've got the lights set up. And if I just render that out with anti-aliasing on. And we'll see what that looks like. Okay, so that's rendered out and that looks nice. Now you see the difference the anti-aliasing makes on that. So you've got to have that on. It's pretty much a must. And that's it. Uh, we've got the light in here. So what we'll do in the next part which is going to be part two we'll put some text there and we'll put 
the glowing ball there. And that's it for part one, I think. Uh, so if you guys enjoyed part one, you you know, come and have a look at part two and you'll learn a bit more. Okay, guys.